Hello there. In the previous set of videos, we have discussed some properties about the expected value of random variables. Now, this video may seem not connected, but there is a deep connection between the two. So, pretty much the study of statistics is pretty much using these statistical values, namely x bar and s squared, to estimate parameters such as mu and sigma squared. So one question one may ask is, why do we use these particular statistics to estimate these particular parameters? Wouldn't there possibly be other ones that are better than that? Namely, why do we use the sum of x values divided by n to approximate this computation here, the sum of x divided by the population size? Now that may seem like a trivial thing to do, right? Uh, that is, why do we use these formulas to approximate one another? Well, they're pretty much the same, right? Now, something that may not be so obvious is the variance calculation. That is, why do we use this expression to approximate this one? Because, namely, you would think that you would divide by capital N in the denominator for the sample variance instead of just N minus 1. So why do we choose that? So why do we choose these statistical calculations to estimate these parameter calculations? And that's what this video will discuss. So let me quickly give a definition uh, for something that we will use. So a statistic, and we're going to call it A. So this is going to take place of our sample mean and our sample variance, is said to be an unbiased estimator of parameter alpha. So alpha is going to take the place of mu and sigma squared if one property satisfies, namely the expected value of A equals alpha. So if the expected value of the statistic is equal to that parameter, then we can use that statistic to estimate that parameter in an unbiased fashion. So let's work this out in proof for these two statistics that we've been using all this time. So property one. Let us show that x bar is an unbiased estimator of mu. So why do we choose x bar to estimate mu? This proof will verify that for us. So let us first start off by finding the expected value of x bar. And here x bar is a random variable in its own right. So again, that's going to be equal to the expected value of 1 over n times the sum of these x values. We can factor out that 1 over n outside the expected value. So it's the expected value of the sum of our x. And this is going to be equal to 1 divided by n by interchanging the sum of these expected values. So this is xk, by the way. And I've worked this in a lot of detail in this last video that we've done. So that's going to be equal to the expected value of x1 plus the expected value of x2 all the way down to the expected value of xm. And each of these values are coming from the same exact population. So they have the same exact mean, namely mu. So these ends will cancel, just leaving us with mu. So we have that the expected value for x bar is equal to mu. That means x bar is a good approximation for mu. So that's pretty trivial, right? Uh, that's usually not the one that a lot of us are questioning. So the next thing is that s squared is an unbiased estimator of sigma squared, which will then be a direct corollary to prove that s is an unbiased estimator of sigma. All right, so proof. What is the expected value of the sample variance equal to? So this formula, again, is going to be equal to 1 divided by m minus 1 times the sum from k is equal to 1 to m of x minus x bar the quantity squared. 
Now, a lot of you may have been wondering all this time, why do we divide by n minus 1? If this comes out to sigma squared, then that proves that this value must be n minus 1 in the denominator, and no other value would make that work. So we're pretty much going to factor this 1 over n minus 1 out, and hope that in the end it gives us what we want. So that's going to be the expected value of the sum from k is equal to 1 to m of x minus x bar to the quantity squared. Alright, so let us FOIL this out and see what comes out of it. So the expected value of s squared is going to be equal to 1 over m minus 1 times the expected value of the sum, and let's FOIL this binomial out, that's going to be x squared minus 2x x bar plus x bar to the quantity squared. So that's after we distribute everything. So what can we get from this? Well, we can distribute this sum across each of these terms. So that's going to say that expected value of s squared is equal to 1 over m minus 1 times the expected value of the sum of x squareds. So remember, 2 and x bar are just constants in regards to the summation. So we can just factor them out. This is going to be minus 2x bar times the sum of x. And then remember, x bar squared again is a constant, so we can factor him out of the summation. So that's going to be plus x bar squared times the summation of just, well, we're just left with 1 at that case, right? All right, so what do we have here? So this is going to be equal to the sum of x squared minus 2x bar times, well for this next term I'm going to rewrite the sum of x in a little different way. I'm going to sum of x, I'm going to divide by n and multiply by n because that's not really going to change anything. And the sum of 1 n times is just going to be equal to n. So this is going to be x bar squared times n. So why do I rewrite this green term as so? Well, this term is precisely equal to x bar, right? So that means once we rewrite everything, so let's expect to value the variance. So this is going to be the sum of our squared x values. And then we're going to have minus 2 x bar. Now we have squareds of them, minus n, plus x bar squareds n. And note here that these two terms have the same exact exponents on both n and x bar, namely we have negative 2 here and positive 1 here, so that's going to give us negative 1 total in the end. So that means the expected value of the sample variance is going to be equal to 1 over m minus 1 times the expected value of the sum of x squareds minus x bar squared times n. Now I'm going to distribute this expected value into this bracket. So that's going to give us the expected value of the variance is going to be equal to 1 over m minus 1 times the expected value of the sum of x squareds minus the expected value of x bar squared times n. That should be the expected value. So note here, n is a constant, so we can factor that out. So that's going to give us the expected value of the sample variance is equal to 1 over m minus 1 times the expected value of the sum of x squareds minus n times the expected value of the square of the sample mean. All right, so the sum and this expected value can be interchanged, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to write this as the sum of the expected values of x squared. So the sum of the expected values of x squared. 
So remember what this expression is. This is the second moment of x. So what do we know about the second moment of x? So recall that the second moment of x is equal to the mean of x plus the variance of x. In this case, we're talking about one random variable, so I'm just going to rewrite this as mu squared plus sigma squared. So also, what do we know? So if, so that's that term. So now let's look at this term. What is the expected value of x bar squared? So that's going to be the second moment of the sample mean. So that's going to be equal to mu x bar squared plus sigma x bar squared. So what is sigma x bar squared? So remember from the previous video that mu x bar is equal to mu and sigma x bar is equal to sigma divided by the square root of n. Remember these two properties. So that means this is just going to be equal to mu squared plus sigma squared divided by n. So we have these two properties that we're just going to place into this previous expression. So that's going to give us the expected value of the sample variance is equal to 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of mu squared plus sigma squared minus n times mu squared plus sigma squared over n. And that's a really, really big jump to make. So remember, mu squared and sigma squared are constants with regards to summations. So this is going to give us expected value of the sample variance is equal to 1 over n minus 1 times n of the mu squared plus sigma squared minus, and we can distribute this n in, to get mu squared minus mu squared n minus sigma squared. So I'm going to now distribute this n in. So that's going to give us 1 divided by m minus 1 multiplied by n mu squared plus n sigma squared minus n mu squared minus sigma squared. So notice the n mu squareds will eliminate from one another. And then we're left with the expected value of the variance. And again, we're not really doing anything with this 1 over n minus 1 quite yet. So this is going to be n times sigma squared minus sigma squared. And this is where the magic begins to happen. So I'm going to factor out a sigma squared out of these two terms. So I'm going to be left with sigma squared multiplied by n minus 1. And this is the point where you realize why the denominator of the sample variance has to be n minus 1 for this to work. Because if they do not equal, then that means they will not cancel. And that means the expected value of s squared will not be sigma squared. But from here, we can get this last property that the expected value of the sample standard deviation is just going to be equal to sigma as well. And that's pretty much a reason why we divide by n minus 1 and not n. So pretty much a summary of this video. Nothing really new. We're just proving stuff that we've been using all this time. Namely, the expected value of x bar is equal to mu. And the expected value of s squared is equal to sigma squared. And the expected value of s is equal to sigma. And this is why we use these values because they are unbiased estimators of the parameters.